Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 2D style clicker game in Unity and welcome to episode 10. So in this episode we are going to cover rotating the background here just to give it a little bit more life and we're also going to look at creating a button and some scripting which will allow us to automatically sell cookies. So in the same way that we have this buy baker button, we'll have a buy, I don't know, buy shop button and we'll be able to sell so many cookies. So let's start with that. So what we'll need to start with initially is replicating what we have for Global Baker and creating, well, basically Global Shop. So if we take our Global Baker script, hold Control, press D to duplicate, we'll change the name of the script and the class inside the script. So change to Global Shop and let's open up the script in Visual Studio and then change the class name at the top here from Global Shop uh, sorry, from Global Baker to Global Shop. Now, save the script. So, we're going to have to use the same kind of thing that we've got going on here. So, let's go through each variable and each line of code to see if it's relevant and if we can still use it. In this case, yes, we can use the fake button. Yes, we can use the fake text. Yes, we can use the real button. Yes, we can use the real text. Current cache, we can use that. Uh, Baker value, we can change to shop value turn off button yes we'll still need that public game object baker stats we'll have that as shop stats and you'll notice as we change this now below if there's an error it highlights for us which is quite nicely so number of bakers we'll change to number of shops and this one bake per second we'll have We'll just have shop per second. We'll keep everything consistent, even though that's how many we're selling per second. So current cache is equal to global cache, sorry, cache count. We understand that. Baker stats, so that's going to be a new object over here. So let's take this object here, shrink it a little, hold control, press D. Let's move it downwards, and we'll change this to say shops. And we'll say at how many per second. So we have one shop selling one cookie per second. So let's change this to shop display. And this is a great example of code we've already written that we don't need to rewrite all over again. We can manipulate, modify, and there we have. So this now, Baker Stats, becomes our shop stats. And the text is equal to shops plus number of shops at shop per second and then per second so that works the fake box is going to say by shop plus shop value and then the real one is going to say the exact same thing so by shop plus shop value. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep it, oops, that should be a lowercase s, and I'm going to keep uh, that as 50. So if current cache is uh, greater than or equal to shop value, so in this case 50, then like we do, we have the set buttons, turn them off, and if turn off button is equal to true, then real button dot set active, fake button, yeah. So it works out the same principle here. So I'm going to save that script. And then I'm going to duplicate these two buttons right here. So baker button and fake baker button. Hold control, press D. Let's bring them down in line. Rename them. So shop button. And take away that one. And fake shop button. Take away that one as well. And then we change the text in both of them so we can highlight both texts. And buy shop for $50. So, like I say, the whole principle is going to be the same as how we've done the baker. <clears throat> and if we go on, which is it? I think it's which one are we in? global shop. So we need to have global shop in roughly the same places where we have the uh, global baker. But, you know, it's entirely up to you if you want to. So we have global baker here on the mechanics object. So let's attach a global, if I can find it, shop onto the mechanics object and let's attach those right there. So real shop button is the one 
that is undone. So real button and real text and then fake button and then fake text. And shop stats is going to be this new object down here that we created, which is the text. So now, theoretically, we'll get things working. However, they won't work per se. So we'll be able to test this out, but nothing will actually happen. So if we, you know, get to a point where we create enough cookies, both buy shop and buy baker will activate. It's probably a good idea to, you know, test as you go along, but it's tailored to you whether you want to test as you go along. I'm doing this just to make sure what I've done is correct. So there we go. Buy shop. Now, as we've clicked it, because nothing is theoretically attached to this, it's changed the buy baker. So that is our next step. So the buy baker button, this one right here, goes to button object and it's start auto cooking. So if we go on there and we'll need to find and start this one. So what we can do is have an auto sell. So if we take this auto cookie script, which is this one, and we can hold control, press D once again, rename to auto sell. And yep, we'll need to change that. It's got auto C cell. That's not what I wanted. Auto cell. There we go. So now we change the name up here. Cell. Let's save that script. Now, we've got to be careful what we do here because if you remember, this button itself, these two buttons still relate to the baker buttons. So we're going to have to change a couple of things. And the fake baker button doesn't really matter what we have on here because that disappears once we have maximum anyway. So this object is kind of pointless. We don't need to change that. It's this object. So remember on here we have purchase log and start auto cookie. So if we go to our purchase log, we have start auto cookie. So we've already got our auto cell in place. We may need to change a couple of things, but what we can do is copy this method right here in purchase log, change it. So we'll need start auto sell. Yes, we have the play sound. Auto cookie, we'll need to change to auto sell because we're gonna attach that to a new object. So we change that here as well. In fact, I've done that a little bit silly. I shouldn't have done that, should I? I should actually add the variable. So public game object auto sell semicolon so this one now should be auto sell because we're still using this one start auto cookie so global cash dot cash count less than equal and this should be shop value and this should be global shop so we take away our shop value once again this should be global shop dot shop value and yet again shop so we can then turn off the button global shop again and this should be shop per sec and then finally global baker down here again is global shop and number of shops and save that script so now we've got that in place and we need to reference this auto sell so we need to go set the button and then come to our auto sell so shop button yep purchase log and we have start auto sell. So now at this point, we are pretty much there with how we're setting up the mechanics, duplicating them from by the bakers. So what we can do is create auto cookie. Let's create a new game object and let's call this auto sell cookie. And remember we have that auto sell. So let's attach that onto auto sell cookie. And if we go to that auto sell script, let's check that we're doing the right thing here. So public bool, we'll change this to selling cookie. So are we selling the cookie? We'll have this as cash, so cookie to increase. Do we really need to? I think, I think we will. So we'll have that as cash increase. And internal increase will keep the same. So void update, what we'll say is cash increase is equal to global shop 
plus shop per second. Internal increase is now equal to that cash increase. So if selling cookie is equal to false, then we sell it. So we can go selling cookie. And now here we'll change this name in the I enumerator. So we'll change that to sell the cookie, which means we have to change the start coroutine line here, sell the cookie. And now we can change selling cookie to false. So this one here, global cookies dot cookie count. We need to change that to the global cash and we need to have cash count. So global cash dot ca oops, cash count plus equals internal increase, which we have there. So we can save that script, head back to unity. We have our auto sell still there. Everything is now in place. So we need to turn off that auto sell cookie, head back to our mechanics object. And we need to, uh, gosh, which one do we have? We did all that there, didn't we? So I just want to check that we've done this right at this point because the button here, shop button relates to button object, which relates to auto sell, which is in the purchase log. So we need to put auto sell cookie in purchase log, save the scene. This is where everything gets confusing, but hopefully we have done the right thing now. So what this should mean is that we can make loads of cookies, loads and loads and loads of cookies. Who doesn't like cookies? And when we press buy shop, we should see everything work just nicely. Even though we've based all our scripts off the original buy baker script, we should still be able to sell the cookies. Now we will come across a problem, but we should be able to resolve it. See, at this point, we're not taking away any cookies. So this is the final thing we have to do. We're adding to our cache, which is all good and well in our auto sell. But what we have to do is take away from our global cookie right here. So we need to take away from cookie count as we sell. But we also need an if statement because if we have no cookies, we can't sell anything. So sell the cookie if global cookies dot cookie count equals zero, then what we need to do is let's put an annotation in here for now and just say we can't do anything. So we may uh, change that at a later date. So then else, if we do have more than one, we can take that code place it here, but then we also have to remember to take away from our global cookies. So global cookies dot cookie count is less than, uh, sorry, minus equals one semicolon and save. So that will work perfectly now. So I'm not going to bother testing up to 50 cookies again. You, we can see that it works because we can see the code working just nicely here. And it will take away a cookie every time that we sell one. And obviously because of this if statement, if we got none, it won't sell anything. So let's move on to actually using this background to rotate it, make it a bit nicer. So we can do that all via C Sharp script. So right click, create C Sharp script, and we'll call this rotate sky. Let's open that up. We can get rid of any annotations and void start. We do not need them. We don't need any variables either, unless you want one, but I will explain where we need to use one if you so wish to. So we need to access the render settings for this and we need to manage the sky box and we need to manage or rather set a float within the sky box. And in brackets and quotes, if we put underscore and then we need to access the rotation, comma, and then the speed of the rotation. So this is where I say you can use a variable. If you want, you could put, for example, 1.1f uh, if you want. And close bracket semicolon. If you wanted that to be, let's say, a variable, you wanted to change dynamically somewhere within the game, then that would be a variable and you just declare it as a float at the top. 
So let's save that script. And this script can be attached to pretty much anywhere. It, it's kind of not too important. So we can attach it to our mechanics object because why not? And then if we press play, we can see our background doesn't want to move. So what I think we'll do is we'll actually, should we set it as a variable, see if it comes out all right. So public and float, let's have it rotate speed and we'll make it equal to 1.1 F. So we'll change this here. And I think what we'll do as well, just to be on the safe side is we'll have time dot time multiplied by rotate speed. So the reason we do that is, for example, if we decide to speed up or slow down the time frame of the game, then at least the skybox will kind of spin relative to the rest of the game. So let's press play and see this in action now. And it still doesn't want to work. Okay. So have I done something wrong here? Let me check if I've done this correct. So render settings, skybox, set float. Uh, have I spelled rotation right? I may have. Did I spell that right? I can't quite remember. Uh, do we attach rotate sky, rotate speed is set to 0 0.1. So let's change that to 1.1. That may be it. <laughs> it may be have done it very, very slow, but there we go. I think it was because of the speed. For some reason it set it to 0 0.1, but there we go. There's the skybox looking kind of cool. So guys, we have uh, quite a bit to our game now. And I think next episode, we're going to look at saving information in player prefs. And I think one cool idea that I did come up with was it's going to cost you to save your game. So that's going to be kind of cool to work in and work out, as it were. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.